Cam Banana, Disco Stick, Tuna Torpedo, Lap Rocket, Yogurt Slinger. Oh, oh it's so God. tasty. <laughs> it's, it's so far up How my nose. Is... Pee Wee, Cork Sword, and the ever loved Dick. Dick. Yeah. Hey gang, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well in your own little quarantine bubbles. I realize it's been a minute since I've been here. It's been 84 years. But as promised in the last video that went haywire on this channel, I said I was gonna come back and talk about the male side of things. Dick. This side. I did the Secrets of the Female Orgasm that was huge, well-loved, everybody wanted to know about Dicka. Now this is not going to be an orgasm specific video, sorry guys, but there are a lot of other interesting things about the womb broom that we don't really know. I get a lot of men in my profession. I am actually an advanced holistic health practitioner, individualized nutrition and weight loss specialist. However, I do a lot about holistic health. So that just means characterizing all parts of the body and mind as one interconnected unit all functioning together. Every different thing in your mind and body affecting everything else in a way that takes care of and creates and handles your overall health, wellness, and body image. I deal with a lot of men that come to me with concerns who are nowhere near the old age enough to be having such concerns like erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, not being able to keep it up during sex. That all falls into the the erectile dysfunction category. However, there are different circumstances that I get asked about and also circumcision. What pray tell, sir, is a circumcision? I take my little machine, I take your little thing, I put it into this little hole here and nip the tip. Oh, I changed my mind. I forgot my heart, I got one. There are a lot of things to do with circumcision that it's very rare even doctors are aware of. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. And so I wanted to touch on all of that. First being erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation can stem from being circumcised. Later in the video, watch till the end, we'll get more into circumcision. Now we all have a reptilian part of our brains. Developed around 500 million years ago. It's instinctual in its operation and thinks on what we call prime more drives. So in order to maintain and preserve a species, we need air, food, water, protection and reproduction, the basics of life. It takes the human genome a hundred thousand years to change only one tenth of one percent. This means that we're all still very primally wired. Our bodies and minds still believe that we are cavemen. So the reptilian part of the brain is concerned with the four F's. Fight, flight, food, and fornication. Make note that the last F is fornication, not the first, contrary to the belief of many men. So the first thing our reptilian brain does is it checks to make sure that the four Fs are locked down. That means checking for safety and security, AKA fight and flight. Is there a need to fight? Is there a need to run? We don't know what predators are out there in the caveman world, yet here we are in our homes just waking up to a normal day. So once the mind, even of a human, realizes that it is safe and secure, only then is it gonna be comfortable going to search for food. And after after that, when it is safe and fed, will anybody even be thinking about sex? Fornication. Nowadays, most people, especially in the Western civilization, have way too much life stressors going on. The unfortunate thing is that there is a huge percentage of young men between the ages of 20 and 40 using drugs like Viagra and Cialis. And that is just completely unnecessary. So the reptilian brain feels far from safe and secure. Couple that with the sad diet, the standard American diet, and you end up not being able to get it up. The brain says there's absolutely no way we're even gonna think about an intimate relationship right now because we don't feel safe and we haven't even been fed. Yeah, okay, today's man wakes up, sure, he grabs his coffee and the other standard American diet stuff, white flour, white sugar, refined carbs, pasteurized dairy, any of those things, plus more. The penis doesn't wanna be involved. Nope. 
So if you are experiencing a lower than normal sex drive or other related issues, this might be something for you to look into. So let's get into circumcision. The foreskin is a man's most erogenous zone. The foreskin itself is a complex organ sensitive to touch and feel. In an adult male, it contains up to 20 square inches of skin tissue and an estimated 240 feet of nerves, which means an estimated 20,000 specialized sexual nerve endings. So when the foreskin is stretched or massaged, the thousands of nerve endings send messages to the brain, telling it that these are sexual stimulation signals, how a penis was designed to work. So when circumcision is performed, the foreskin is removed, along with a large quantity of sexual stimulation nerves. So the newly exposed head of the penis starts to develop layer upon layer of tough protective tissue in order to replace the foreskin so that now the glands of the penis can still be protected. The nerve receptors that send pleasure signals to the brain now only receive a fraction of the signals that they should through those thick layers of toughened skin. Compared to an uncircumcised male, the sexual stimulation signals have been significantly reduced. It has very unique sexual functions, which circumcision effectively destroys. Although foreskin chopping was once a purely religious or cultural practice, it was reintroduced into American medicine in the late 1800s as a cure-all. Thanks to the trend of pathologizing, which means treating as an illness, normal human sexuality and genitalia. Circumcision was meant to traumatize and discourage a boy or man man from masturbating, lest his health deteriorate from excessive ejaculations, and we all know in this day and age how ridiculous that sounds. It may come as a shock to find out that in the U.S., many widespread popular beliefs about the penis today are actually based on the same Victorian quackery rather than the medical science that's out there today. Stop it or you'll go blind and then die. A mid-Victorian's guide to the world's greatest social evil, masturbation. The accurate scientific literature of today reveals the physical, neurological, and psychological harms of this tradition, but these are creatively ignored or glossed over in much of the United States medical community. They knew and they let it happen to kids. Nobody could get away with this. Not a priest or a cardinal or a freaking pope. Even anatomy books that you can look at today do not even have a detailed, visual, accurate representation of the foreskin itself. Nor do they have much description at all aside from it just being a piece of skin that covers the head of the penis. But it isn't. It is the head of the penis. Just a tip. It is a highly mobile and extraordinarily sensitive double fold of skin, and it is filled with many, many nerve endings, and even the various aspects of the foreskin itself have very unique purposes and functions that are necessary. Nature gets it right. This is a body part that we are born with. It was never ever meant to be removed, and the reasons why it was ever removed are completely archaic. Yet, unfortunately, doctors of today aren't educated on the details of it. The first step in an operation of this particular type is... It has been, much like various parts of the Bible and other things over the centuries, weeded out of literature as the books evolved, as medical careers evolved, as religion evolved. Did you see? The memo about this. And as most of us are aware, during an erection, it rolls back and inside out, revealing the other parts of the penis. When there is nothing holding the foreskin back, so to speak, specialized mechanisms cause it to spring back over the head of the penis, over the delicate mucous membrane of the glands. The glands is the head of the penis. In this position, it serves as a protective mechanism exactly like your eyelid. How gross is that when we think of circumcision? Imagine if doctors thought that your eyelid caused problems with your sight and they had to be removed. Pretty much the same thing in the pants. At birth, a boy's foreskin is 
diffused to the glands via a membrane that is much like the membrane that fuses your fingernail to your nail. It serves as a type of glue. It's a living glue that females also have that attaches the hood of their clitoris to their clitoris until they reach such an age, just like boys, that this separates naturally. One of the biggest problems when it comes to not circumcising are even doctors that believe that they have to forcibly retract the foreskin. We're going to get into that a little bit later. This living glue, this antibacterial, antifungal substance works its way towards the tip of the penis and it almost comes out in little teeny tiny like pearls as it removes itself from the boy's body as he gets older and as it completely removes itself that then creates the space for the foreskin to eventually be able to retract. This is a normal process of nature. These little pearls are still known as smegma, which is a Latin word that means soap. It is highly antibacterial, antifungal. It is not a bad thing. Doctors believed, based on the smell of it, which I will explain, that it was bad. So what they did was they forcibly retracted the foreskin, scrubbed the head of the penis, which by now is an open wound, and caused all kinds of pain and trauma to infants. So by around 10 to 15 years of age, that is when the boy is finally ready to completely retract the foreskin. I know it seems like a while, 10 to 15 years old, but that's honestly when it happens. And this is an everyday fact in most people's experience except in cultures where infant circumcision is so common that doctors actually exist performing it who have almost zero accurate medical knowledge of what the foreskin is and its purpose. Inconceivable! Using that forcible retraction technique is just like if someone were to rip off one of your fingernails. This injury causes scar tissue and that can cause the foreskin to become abnormally tight. Such problems like that, as well as its natural non-retractability, can be enough for such a doctor or a nurse to decide this part must be defective and should be removed. Another supposed abnormality of the infant's foreskin is the free-moving tip which can extend well beyond the glands. It contains muscle fibers, which really neatly treat it almost like a little drawstring that closes itself over the head, over the glands, thus protecting the urethra, AKA pee hole, from any invaders that can happen in such things like a diaper or, you know, little kids that wander around. These fibers relax themselves when the baby urinates. They relax and peel back just slightly when the baby needs to urinate keeping it pulled back enough from the urethra to not impede urination whatsoever. The body knows what it's doing. This normal contraction of the foreskin as it pulls itself like the drawstring over the head of the glands to protect the urethra can have a long and narrow appearance to it, much like an anteater. And this is interpreted by many unknowledgeable medical professionals in the foreskin area as too tight or even redundant, which it most certainly is not. Smegma also creates an oily, waxy barrier which protects the head of the penis, the infant's glands, from the acidity of urine. Without these layers shielding the urethra from such things like E. coli and other nasties, the infant is more predisposed to urinary tract infections and really buildup of smegma is completely harmless. When a baby has a urinary tract infection, it's often treated with antibiotics, which completely destroy the microbiome in the gut of an infant. And this has a major effect on the infant's overall health and development. So again, unfortunately, frequent cleaning of smegma is often recommended by doctors who still believe in that BS, yet they believe the foreskin's getting in the way of cleaning it. And so let's just chop it off, unnecessary, not needed, not true. There was a survey done in the American Academy of Pediatrics and only three out of every 113 participants understood how to care for an infant's penis. Inconceivable! Overall, 78% of the pediatricians in the American Academy of Pediatrics, the AAP, gave completely either obsolete or downright dangerous advice concerning the intact penis of an infant to parents. We're doomed! <laughs> 
And I know most parents are going to be trusting these doctors to give them accurate info. Like many parents say, there is no such thing as a instruction booklet that comes with an infant. Even as late as in 2012, the AAP's recommendation for cleaning baby's penises and underneath the foreskin is to retract the foreskin forcefully, thus creating this injury in your own child yourself. And then to wash that wound, the bleeding wound, with soap and water is incredibly awful for this child. The soap, of course, causes inflammation and can lead to very serious infections and even more serious problems. The proper info is actually known in most other cultures as leave it alone, it will take care of itself. I promise you, the penis is designed to take care of itself in that way. You're not supposed to be washing under your baby's foreskin. In fact, a male should not be using soap at all unless it is very mild beneath the foreskin for the exact same reason that us females are not washing out the inside of our vaginas with soap. It's literally the same thing. Ridiculous. The inside of a vagina and underneath the male foreskin has its own pH level that's really important for overall health. Changing the pH of those areas can cause inflammation, which then leads to imbalances of the bacteria, the microflora there, and leads to infection. Circumcision, as I mentioned, has been a tradition of some cultures and religions. To signify my covenant with the one true God, I shall on this day circumcise the flesh of my penis, and of you, and you, and of you, and of every male who dwelleth hereby. Excuse me? I don't know what you mean. Grasp the foreskins of our penises and we shall cut there from the extra flesh, amen. I don't think I have any extra. Let me get this straight. You're saying you have too much cock. There's just no way to get it back on there. This modern day phenomenon has its roots in the 1800s when sexual pleasure was considered immoral. That was also when doctors had all sorts of really strange beliefs about vital energy and what even caused diseases. With no knowledge of brain chemistry, ancient doctors believed that the mentally ill had literal demons living inside their heads. So holes were drilled into patients' skull to allow these spirits to escape. It was also falsely believed that men would eventually run out of sperm and that ejaculation was injurious either to physical health or mental health. Which is really funny when you consider that in the exact same time period, women were being treated with vibrators for hysteria. It's funny how all of these thoughts with women were done away with, yet the circumcision part stayed true for some reason. Many people not only shunned masturbation altogether, but it was a real fear that men were going to lose their life force energy, which comes from the actual fact of a man or even women becoming tired and fatigued after coming. This often happened at nighttime during wet dreams. We all know that little boys, as they're growing up, learn that they're having erections and emissions at nighttime while they're sleeping. This is a completely unnecessary normal part of a natural sleep cycle. Some parents were conned into buying all manners of horrific devices to prevent their child from having an erection or accidentally having an emission, aka a wet dream or coming at nighttime. I'm not gonna get into those devices because on this channel we don't get too gross, but if you wanna have a look-see, you can have a look-see. I wouldn't do that if I were you. All were designed to associate pain with genitalia. In Battle Creek, Michigan, lived an anti-masturbation big shot. He was known as John Harvey Kellogg. I'm sure you have heard that last name before probably rings this kind of bell. When you have your way, George, you start every day. Ready to go? With Kellogg's That's a box, Corn Flakes. He recommended punishing both girls and boys for self-abuse, aka masturbating, being self-abusive, by holding them down physically, kicking and screaming, and excising their most abuse prone parts, AKA their genitalia. So what he decided was that the best idea was to introduce a bland vegetarian diet, as that was believed by many back then, to curb sexual feelings. Where this gets really interesting has to do with nutrition, which is sort of my jam. When you introduce a bland vegetarian diet into someone's lifestyle, what happens is they are not getting enough life force energy
energy from the food that they are eating for the body to realize again remember the beginning of the video that it is fed therefore not interested in intercourse you're gonna have a problem having an orgasm if you're a woman you're gonna have a problem having an erection if you're a man a bland vegetarian diet does not give you enough life force energy to make your body satiated enough to be open and most receptive to sex Ooh. I'm taking notes. Procreation, if we're going primal. So Mr. Kellogg invented the cornflake and has since built quite a bank account on various cereals, but that is the origination of cornflakes. Cornflakes were designed to stop little children from having orgasms or erections, all of the above. I'm not hungry. Think about that a little bit the next time you serve your kid a bowl of cornflakes and no life force from food, that also creates hormonal imbalance, which leads to all kinds of other problems. And I do have a lot of vegan and vegetarian clients that I do help to create that life force in their chosen diets, but this goes hormonal. This has a lot of impact on people and their overall health, never mind sex. Priorities. Now let's take a look at the foreskin's role in sexual function as understood by modern medical science. Let's get to the fun stuff. One of the biggest misconceptions I've heard is that the glands, the head of the penis, is the most sensitive part of the penis. Again, not true. As mentioned in the beginning, we need the foreskin for the extra sensitivity. And a huge misconception that comes from that is that the foreskin actually impedes sensitivity by covering the glands. This is not true. When a penis enters the vagina, the foreskin gets automatically pulled back. Not only is this sensitive in a good way to the inside of the vagina, but the vaginal walls therefore also are stimulating this little area just underneath the head that I'm sure every guy knows is crazy sensitive and feels really good, especially on the underside or the back right there. So big misconception that circumcised guys have a better time during sex. Not true. With a detailed understanding of the penis and how it is supposed to function, it's very easy to understand how all of this has gone incredibly wrong over the centuries. So we talked about what happens when the penis goes into the vagina and the foreskin retracts, but what happens when it comes out of the vagina is again, the foreskin comes up over the penis and rubs against the rim, thus creating extra stimulation for the guy. This inside out motion, partially aided by the foreskin, is unique in human physiology. This allows the man to roll the foreskin over the head of the penis himself, whether through intercourse or even as he's masturbating. This creates a gliding sensation that feels really good and is not abrasive or drying to their partner either. Uncut guys are great. Yeah. Just imagine for a second that this is, this is the hood of the uncut cock and then this is the penis face. So what you would do is very gently, you would just kind of try to peel it back. And what do I do with this? Like do I what? put it in a hair clip or do I just no, 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 This, this, you can flick it, suck it, you know, rub your face do that. on it. I don't it. want to rub my face on it. Okay, well, take care of this, though. Okay. Because this is like a big, giant man clit. You know what's actually crazy is that a circumcised penis acts as a squeegee on the inside of the vagina and squeegees out the moisture from the vagina, creating lube to be a necessity. So the foreskin as its own lubricant, AKA pre-cum, we'll get to that too. And erotic scent from the smegma, horrible word I know, but means soap. And that is laced with pheromones. Did you know that male lab rats who are circumcised can't find a mate because they no longer have the scent? As mentioned earlier in the video, that scent was known as something that was wrong or bad or needed to be washed away, causing irritation with soap and all of that jazz. That scent is actually necessary, laced with pheromones to attract females, whether the ladies realize it or not, primal brains. This scent is only even released when a male has an erection because of that reason. So it's not as though he always smells. It's an important chemical signaling for the female, just as the smell of a female's vagina is a chemical signal to a man. And a lot of men are into that, but 
there is a logical reason why. A good health, by the way, will ensure a non-offensive smell of the smegma in both males and females. If you find that you or your partner have an offensive smell down there, you need to be looking at the health of your diet predominantly. You can ask me for more info on that or check out the other videos on this channel. There are tons of videos with information about diet and its effects on our bodies in ways that you might not realize. So like I said at the beginning of the video or a little bit earlier, the foreskin has a few unique pleasure functions when it comes to sex as well that unfortunately circumcised men aren't going to be able to play with too much. So things that I mentioned earlier like premature ejaculation or having an inability to maintain or obtain an erection. Other problems include tingling, numbness, that sucks, and just a general significant decrease in sexual sensation and in the really, really unfortunate fellas being so sensitive that it's painful. Results vary though, because when you destroy parts of a complex, densely innervated structure, the remainder of the nerves must then try to heal themselves and they thus rewire themselves back to the brain in one fashion or another that the brain tries to understand and interpret. And so accurate medical literature has shown that men who are circumcised do tend to need to work a little bit harder towards satisfaction and even do tend to need to use different kinds of stimuli that uncircumcised men don't even have to worry about. And ladies, big tip, play with your partner's foreskin. You know, you can put your tongue in between the foreskin and the glands, the head of the penis, that creates a really neat sensation for a man. Filling that with air, aka a more literal term of blow job, and other different things that you can do, slightly tugging or slightly brushing your teeth against the outside of the foreskin, all kinds of things like that are going to create an amazing and unique, yet very amazing experience for your partner sexually. The secret to a good BJ is focus. You can use a little teeth, but you don't want to be a bite. So that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it entertaining, enjoyable, all of that jazz. Please check out the previous videos on this channel, AKA the Secrets of the Female Orgasm, the latest sex discoveries of 2019, parts one and two, and just other videos. There are videos on this channel that can help heal more than 90% of any, disregarding sex, any, health, wellness, or body image challenge. Please share the channel. So many people can use this info. If you have any questions that you wanna ask me, if you have any curiosities, if you have any video ideas, or if you have any questions you wanna ask a man instead of me, I understand. Please comment them down below. I will be creating Q&A videos. I'm gonna be doing a lot of vlogging now. I've had a lot of requests for days in the life, more, you know, around my life. It's definitely different. It's definitely unique. Anyway, stay tuned. And until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life. Have super amounts of fun with these guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.